everybody. This is how you dance in a gay club. Yeah! Front, back, side, side, up, down. And you go round and round in a circular motion and ripple. Single, single, double, double, single, single, double, double. So like, when you see the dancers, they're always like, in a hurry. And then, they're like, slow motion. Pop, pop. And then snap. <sighs> so, you're in the club and you want to let everyone know you're already there. They got to know that the party's about to start. First, you've got to find your own space. And then, warm up. Because you don't want to intimidate everybody with how fabulous you are. Yeah, dance it out. So, your boyfriend just dumped you. Dance it out. So you just failed a test. Dance it out. So your cat just died. Dance it out. Yeah. Hair flick. Feel the music. And pop, 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 pop.
the sudden tang of hospital disinfectant catches like a fish hook in the back of my throat and I am pulled ashore. I taste the colours and smell the sounds and open my mouth fat and wide and red and round and cry with joy at all the possibilities of life. Then it all starts to go wrong. There are other people here. Hairy, tall and strong. They have been expecting me. I have been given a gender and a name, brimming over with associations, a gift from my parents clutching me tightly. Filled with joy, watchful, smiling, ever poised for celebration, crammed with epidurals, beer and terrible, unlonged-for expectations. And so I find myself pegged out like a trapped rat in the strip-lit backlots of other people's imaginations. He looks just like his father, says a moustached midwife. At least I don't look like you, I think. And she is clearly wrong. I am small and delicate and pink. Not like that hefty thing with its bristly face and beery, sweaty stink. And now I languish in a box at the bottom of my mother's bed. Cards and toys and baby grows and other things well liked by little boys, or so the story goes, have been placed upon a shelf above my head. These other people, whom I have never met, have dared presume to guess whom I might be. Their simple choices based upon the bits of me which can be seen. Choosing clothes, choosing blue, not pink, and paying no attention whatsoever to the green. And I am angry. I roll my hands into tight little pink fists, while in my head I spend an age reconstructing all the lists of the people that I might have been. Perhaps I should complain, but all I do is cry and try to kick with little pink legs. After all, I am but a few hours old, just a baby, and my mind boggles at the multitude of hopeful, choking voices to be heard, and I want to shout out with my own to tell them no. But I am just a baby. Just a baby. And I find I have no voice, as I am just a baby. And I do not know the words. His manners were a fraction too meticulous. If he was real or not, I couldn't tell. But like a silly fool, I fell. Mad about the boy. I know it's stupid to be mad about the boy. I'm so ashamed of it, but must admit the sleepless night I've had about the boy. On the silver screen, he melts my foolish heart in every single scene. 
all of all I'm well aware that here and there are traces of the cared about the boy. Lord knows I'm not a fool girl, I really shouldn't care. Lord knows I'm not a fool girl in the flurry of her first affair. Will it ever climb this odd diversity of misery and joy? I'm feeling quite insane and young again, and all because I'm mad about the boy. Mad about the boy. It's pretty funny, but I'm mad about the boy. He has a gay appeal that makes me feel. There's maybe something sad about the boy Walking down the street His eyes look out at me from people that I meet I can't believe it's true But when I'm blue In some strange way I'm glad about the boy I'm hardly sentimental Love is a Sublime. I have to pay my rental and I can't afford to waste much time. If I could employ a little magic that would finally destroy this dream that pains me and enchains me, but I can't because. Time passes, skin stretches, bones shift and stiffen. Suddenly, we are a boy. The decision made unconsciously, without a fanfare. There are certain boxes that are tricky to avoid. And so we sit, in grey flannels, on the carpet, at the school, sipping warm milk from cardboard boxes, soaking up the rules. The Wendy house is for the girls, the football pitch is for the boys. The boys are too rough to play with the plastic saucepans, the girls too delicate to play with the boys. And so we find the boundaries of the playground. Black metal fences hidden in words and books and looks and clothes. Inscribed in the stories that we tell. Written in the silences of others. The awkward pause. The sudden gap. The hush that blossoms when the lines are crossed. Never be afraid to ask a question, says the poster. Never be afraid to be yourself, says the teacher. But always follow the rules. Walk single file down the corridor. Keep to the left. Play nicely with each other. Always wear the correct school uniform. Don't step out of line. And so we plod along through education, finding out which questions we should ask and which we should avoid, learning both by rote and imitation how to be normal, healthy, law-abiding girls and boys. Being told not to stand like that, people will think you're peculiar. Asking a question about the ancient Greeks. Was Patrocles Achilles' boyfriend then? and being told, don't be so silly. Scrawling a kiss after my name on a birthday card to a friend and being told, boys don't give kisses to boys.
And so we all become performers. Some of us willing and some of us not. Coached in our parts by those who've gone before us, regardless of whether they themselves are happy in their lot. We all have certain roles to play, teachers included, prescripted outlines handed down through the generations by the great writers of the past, the unknown heroes of a bygone age who set in stone the stories of our lives, a never-changing script for an ever-changing cast. The stories of the world, it seems, have already been written. The parts played out a thousand times before, and any variation must be subtle, or if it isn't, vilified or carefully ignored. The universe, soft and juicy like a watermelon, is cleaved in two. Girls and boys, men and women, normal and abnormal, similar and different, us and them, us and them. The sharp edges of the words slice down like axe blades, defining and separating, keeping us sure. After all, no one wants to wear the dunce's cap. And no one wants to get kept back after school, or sent out to stand alone in the corridor, or get laughed at for sounding like a fool. For we all know there's honour in uniform, and safety in sticking with the herd, and favours for those who do their homework. And applause for all those who learn the words.
once again, time moves us onwards. Again, the body stretches and explores. Hormones start to play their distant music in the blood, whispering of dreamy sun-drenched shores. And then the beat kicks in, and the music roars, and suddenly the body isn't ours anymore. There are other voices here, lusty, loud and strong, calling out for things in ways which cannot be ignored. And so we shift again, searching for a new person to be, hungry for experience, keen to change, hankering to be someone, but nervous and unsure, desperate for a role that will provide an explanation. And so we find ourselves pegged out like trapped rats in the strictly backlots of our own imaginations. And who are we now? There are other people here already who might be like us. Mums and dads and movie stars, girls in bands, men in clubs, people on the pages of newspapers and magazines, characters in novels, stories and songs, each one a promise of a place we might belong. And there are places to be, clubs and bars and bandstands, benches in the park, gigs and social spaces built for meetings after dark. Each one offers an identity, a person to be, someone fixed and tangible for all the world to see. And until we make these choices, it's hard to interact. For everyone likes certainty and clarity, in fact. And so we pick a name for who we are, a word to describe the things we think and feel, and sum up all our fears and hopes and dreams, and say it out loud to somehow make it real. Come out of the closet, the slogan goes. Come out and be yourself. And we will sell the clothes to you and a lifestyle off the shelf. Gay, straight, bi, trans. The world is full of big name designer brands. And once we've chosen a label that we want, or had it conferred upon us from above, or stuck on when we weren't looking by others on the shop floor and paid whatever price the world has asked us for. Surely then there will be no confusion anymore. Surely then we will all be who we really are. Dressed to impress, in the correct outfit, easy to identify and Spottable from afar. But they are not always cut to size, these off the peg identities. They do not always fit. Sometimes they are too big or loose or wide. Well, they need to be let out a little bit. And what happens if we somehow pick the wrong clothes? Or do not look like who we're meant to be? Or can't afford the outfit that we want? Or find that the clothes we've chosen do not match the person that people see? A closet is not the only way to trap people. Open wide the doors and you will see rows of gaudy prisons dangling from their hangers, itching to embrace the waiting hordes. It is easy to think we know someone, to see the labels that they wear, the clothes that they have chosen, the styling of their hair, the music that they listen to, the places that they go, all the little signals that they choose to put on show and to miss the person that is really there, the fleshy, blood-filled, heart-beating person who is just the same as everyone else beneath the clothes, frightened, smiling, bruised, 
angry, loving, cheating, kind, capable of doing wonderful things and terrible things, important, inconsequential, hard to find. Everyone needs to be someone. And every morning that we wake, we need to find a face to put on, to face the world. And each new face, once it has been unfurled, becomes a mask, a barrier, another way to keep us separated. Another layer of obfuscation to hide away the people that we are. And it is easy to fall into the trap of taking the world at face value and valuing the face above the words and listening to the name and not the story and losing sight of the person in the herd. Yeah. <laughs> 